Welcome to SPC Insights with Dr. Bill, simplifying SPC in statistical analysis. This video is going to take a look at process capability and performance metrics measure. Those four terms you see, CP, CPK, PP, and PPK, what do they actually measure? Are they measuring the same thing? No, they're not. In fact, those values will give you insights into statistical control and process centering. If CP and PP are essentially the same, your process is in statistical control. If they're different, your process is out of control. If all four are the same, your process is in control and centered relative to the specification. But if CP and PP are different than CPK and PPK, process isn't operating at the center of specification. If they're all four different, you're out of control and not centered. So in this video, what we're going to do is we're going to do an introduction and we're going to introduce process capability. CP, the capability ratio, PP, the performance ratio, and then we're going to focus on process centering with CPK and PPK. Is there a short and long-term capability? We'll answer that. And then we're going to look at a stable and unstable process and see what impact they have on these four metrics that we're looking at. So let's start with process capability. What is it? It's the ability of a process to meet specification. What it's defined by is the room available for the process to operate. That's the specifications. In the room, the process needs to operate, the process var variations. So all four metrics are ratios of the room based on the specifications to the room based on process variation. Let's start with CP, capability ratio. CP is defined as the upper spec minus the lower spec divided by six sigma, or six sigma is estimate of the process variation from, an, from a control chart, a range control chart. But it's the same as we said, it's a room based on specification, upper spec minus the lower spec, divided by the room the process needs to operate, which is six sigma. So if CPK, excuse me, if CP is greater than one, the room available is greater than the room the process needs, and you're in good shape. PP is a performance ratio. Very similar, it's based on the upper spec minus the lower spec, divided by, in this case, 6 times S, where S is the calculated standard deviation using all the data. The only difference between CP and PP is how the process is calculated. But again, it's a room based on uh, specifications divided by the room needed to operate, in this case, based on past performance, since we're using S. Now, neither CEP or PP focus on process centering. So it can be greater than one, and you think things are great, but nothing be within specifications. Process can operate completely outside the specification range as shown here. So what you need is something that takes into account where the process is centered, and CPK does that. It's the minimum of a capability based on the upper spec and a capability based on the lower spec. So the capability is still the room available based on specifications to the room the process needs to operate, but instead of the whole specification range, we're taking half the specification range. For example, for the lower spec, the capability is going to be the average minus the lower spec limit, which is the, uh, the available room, and three sigma is going to be the room the process needs to operate. So our capability is a distance from the average to the spec limit divided by three sigma. Now, PPPK is the same, again, as CPK, except the difference is we're going to use the standard deviation instead of the value of sigma, which we get from a range control chart, as we'll see here in just a minute. So that's the only difference between CPK and PPK, is that we're using the calculated standard deviation instead of sigma. But again, it's going to be based on the specifications closest to the average. So is there a short and long-term capability? Sometimes CPK is called the short-term and PPK is called the long-term, but there's really not a short-term and long-term capability. Instead, there are two types of estimated capability. One that uses the range control chart and the within variation to calculate sigma, and the other uses the calculated standard deviation. So let's take a look at two examples, starting with one that's a stable process that's in control. So what we did was we did data uh, randomly generated some data from a normal distribution, had an average of 100 and a standard deviation of 10. And here's an example of the data that we have. What we're gonna do is take this data, which should be a stable process that was randomly uh, generated, and we're going to do a control chart on that. We use an individual's chart to do that. We're gonna have an X chart where we're gonna plot the individuals and a moving range chart where we're gonna 
plot the range between consecutive values. So here's the X chart of the data. You can see our points are plotted, we have our average, and we calculated our control limits. Now the moving range chart, we're going to plot on the moving range chart, and those are the range again between consecutive va values or consecutive points. And this is an example of the moving range chart. The first moving range is the range between the first two X values, 86.5 and 105.8. So that moving range is 19.3, and it's plotted there as you can see. Now, so we have two charts. We have our X chart and we have our moving range chart with their averages and the control limits. Both of these are in statistical control. There's no points beyond the control limits. There are no patterns that we have. Now, sigma is estimated from the average moving range, which is 8.194. So we calculate sigma and it is 7.26. That's what we use with CP and CPK. To calculate the standard deviation F of all the data is 8.11. That's what we use with PP and PPK. And those are fairly close to each other. Now let's assume the specs are 75 and 125. The average from the X chart is about 99.519. So that's very close to the center of the specifications. So we can calculate our CP and PP values. Those are fairly close, 1.15 and 1.03. CPK is based on the lower spec, it's closest to the average, it's 1.12, CPK is 1.01. So again, we're comparing the room the process needs to operate with the room specification allows. These are all very similar, these four metrics, because our process is in control and it's centered. Now let's see what happens when we have an unstable process example. In this case, we're not going to be in control. Our process is going to change over time. So we generated some data to show that, and it's shown here. So the first part of the data, we're down in the upper 80s and lower 90s. And then as time goes on, it shifts. We're in the upper 90s up into above 100. And it's because the process is out of control. It's changing. So we can take a look at the X chart and the moving range chart for our data. So you can see the X chart definitely has out of control points. We have points beyond the control limits. And there also appear to be two patterns. Uh, there's a, a run down below when the first uh, part of the chart, and then it seems to shift upward on the second part of the chart. And there's a one point out on the moving range chart. So we have a process that's not stable. So what happens to our, our, our values? Well, again, sigma is estimated from the average moving range. In this case, it's going to be 2.43. S is the calculated standard deviation, and it's 4.65. Look at the big difference between them. S is almost twice as big as the calculated sigma from the, from the moving range. So then we can go ahead and calculate our values. CP is 1.37. PP is 1.72. Huge difference between those. CPK is 0.58. PPK is 0.3. Again, the results are quite different. Why is that? Well, CP and PP are different because the process is unstable and the value of S is inflated. PPK and PPK are different because the process is not centered. Let's take a look. What do the perform performance metrics and process capability measure? We had four CP, PP, CPK, and PPK. These values will tell you whether or not a process is in control or if it's centered or not. And there's no really short or long-term capability and we looked at an example of stable and unstable process. So thank you very much for watching the video. Click the YouTube button below to subscribe. Visit our SPC Knowledge Base 220 plus article. Download our software and make your own process capability studies. Thank you very much for watching the video. We appreciate it.